Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya. Here in fabulous Honolulu, take a look at this aerial footage provided by Excite Modular Drone. Um, so I'm here at PTC 2019 with my good friend, Mr. Todd Coleman, of course, the CEO of eStructure. Todd, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks, Jamie. Good morning. It's always a pleasure having you on, Todd. You're always so full of brand new breaking news. Pleasure to, pleasure to be here. Uh, we uh, we actually just had a press release go out today with the eStructure logo on it. We have big news coming out of Vancouver, expansion of Van 2. Tell us more. Yeah, so we just announced this morning, we've been, uh, as you know, we, we entered the Vancouver market sort of last spring with the acquisition of uh, Backbone Data Vault. Uh, about a week or so, we announced a significant expansion of that facility, which is a 10,000 square foot, two and a half megawatt facility in the Mount Pleasant neighborhood. But we've been actively working for the better part of the last 12 months on finding a second facility. And you know, as I've said, Vancouver's an interesting market. It's fairly disaggregated, high cost of real estate, very difficult to find the right building. And so, as I like to say, if it was easy, everyone would be doing That's it. Right. But we're excited to announce a new 54,000 square foot hyperscale facility. We're bringing in 10 megawatts of uh, power into the facility. So in our usual style of being able to offer hyperscale, lots of power, lots of cooling, you know, our target is 20 to 30 kilowatts of cabinet. And so this facility will have that. We'll, we'll bring diverse fiber ring between our, what we call the van one facility and the new van two facility. And so we're, we're actively working. We've got engineers engaged, construction folks engaged. And so fully expect to have phase one operational uh, before the end of 2019. So east structure of you, always on the move, always expanding, loving this. So are there any other type of expansions we can hint at right now or too well, early Well, stay in the year? tuned, stay tuned. I mean, look, we're, uh, you know, right now we got effectively two dots on the map. We're pretty deep in the Montreal market, which we love with three facilities there. We always expected to go deeper into Vancouver. That's sort of our model, which is to have a hub facility with lots of connectivity, a lot of power, and then build from there in a much larger way. And so yeah. we're bringing that to bear in Vancouver in the way that we have in Montreal. Do, will we add more dots on the map? For sure, we're going to add more dots on the map. We're definitely not done. Uh, where we're going to add those dots, you know, stay tuned. And talking 2018 Montreal, uh, we, we just saw another acquisition, Cologics, with Colo D. What did you, do you see that as a trend going on in the Montreal or other Canadian markets? What's, what's going on there? Well, so there was, there's a fair amount of market, I, I call it over exuberance. Uh, towards the end of 2018, we had Cologix buying Colo D. Uh, Vantage bought four degrees. Uh, you know, so there's there's an interest level in Montreal, some of which I suspect is driven by particular customers that those individuals, those uh, acquirers may have in other markets, uh, or it just may be, you know, expansion into a market that's, you know, had a fair amount of activity in the last few years. You know, I, I don't know what to make of the trend. I mean, you know, two deals announced in the same week leading up to the holidays. Uh, there's a fair amount of over exuberance in terms of the market pricing, which, you know, is a little concerning because, you know, over exuberance sometimes leads to some irrational behavior. So I think we'll, we'll watch that fairly closely, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're pretty comfortable with our position in Montreal. We have three fantastic facilities. We have a downtown hub. We have hundred and what was 156,000 square foot facility in our MTL2 that we're expanding to be about 175,000 square foot by the time it's done. And you know we have 30 megawatts sitting at our doorstep. So we feel really good. Uh, and the and the the bit of it is, is we are a Canadian company. We are headquartered there. We have Canadian investors. And we're, we're pan-Canadian platform as we go, and we will add more dots to the map. So we feel like we, we understand the market fairly well compared to others that might be just uh, stepping into the market. But, you know, I think those trends will, will play out over time. You know, doing onesie, twosie deals that add a market but don't add a platform. Um, I don't know that those are trends, but we'll, we'll continue to watch it and see how it goes. Well, there's no doubt about it. Montreal is certainly e-structure land, and uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll keep reminding us of that. Um, last time we spoke, we also mentioned that eStructure was just beginning a channel partners program. Any update there? No, you know, uh, we're active in it. We've added some partners already. We'll continue to build on that in, in 2019. We haven't, uh, in fairness, put a, uh, a lot of 
uh, channel marketing effort around it in terms of uh, really wrapping the, the programmatic piece to it. That's going to come in the next two quarters. But we've identified master partners, some key agents that we're bringing on, a lot of them w that we've worked with on a sort of an unofficial onesie twosie basis. Uh, and now it's, it's becoming more program programmatic in, in 2019. So more to come on that uh, as we bring on a significant amount of capacity both in Montreal and Vancouver. Uh, we believe that that indirect distribution channel is is very key to our success. Yeah, and there are some uh, amazing agents out there uh, for sure that uh, we have long relationships with that uh, are really excited about the eStructure logo coming on board. So um, number one customer trend that you see influencing your data center operations 2019, go. You know, I it's probably the same trend that's been going on since 2018. Look, scale, flexibility, uh, being at the right place at the right time, relationships play out. So even though we view ourselves as an infra for infrastructure business, it's about relationships okay. and how do we grow with them and how can we be flexible and how do we you know, truly understand their model and their way of do bi doing business because I wish it was a one size fits all, but that's long gone, that's years ago. So I think that trend continues in 2019 for us. You know, we believe in the trend of, of offering our customers more. More options in terms of data centers, more options in terms of markets, more options in terms of connectivity, cloud providers that are available in our data centers. And so we'll continue to add to that. So I think the flexibility and the breadth of what you can offer those customers while still focusing on your core competency is, is going to be the key to our success in 2019. No, no doubt about it. And uh, it's funny, uh, doing these interviews with so many C-levels over the years, every um, every CEO here that, that talks customer first is uh, is certainly on a growth path, and you're no exception, my friend. So thank you for joining us, and thank you for sharing us uh, your insight. Thank you for having me, as always. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking.